You know, it's hard to believe that it's actually been five years uh, this month, when you officially think about it, since the Mecca Sally arc uh, began. And what's funny about that is it doesn't feel like it's been five years, but it has been. And despite the fact that there are a lot of fans out there that that enjoyed the Mecha Sally arc for several reasons. You know, some of them feeling it was a nice change of pace. Some of them feeling that the character development was good. And I'm not saying there wasn't any good elements in the Mecha Sally arc. I mean, I'll give it credit. The first several issues seemed to start off on a good note, but as soon as they split into two teams, Team Fighters and Team Freedom, that's when I think it kind of started to fall a little flat. The Team Freedom part probably was the more positive side of things. Was the Team Fighters one? It was okay. It had its moments. But it was mainly the same rinse and repeat cycle that we'd seen numerous times uh, throughout the arc. You know, with Team Freedom, on their side of things in the story arc... The positives was they were building towards something. They were building towards a moment. And on the Team Fighter side, it was like all they were doing was following after the Death Egg, trying to capture Sally as Mecha Sally, you know, so they could de-roboticize her or find a way to do it. Uh, stop her and some egg hordes from destroying a village. You know, allow her to escape because they don't really want to try to harm her too much. Rinse and repeat. And it's like, okay, we get it. Now, some have said that the reason split between the group happened was because Sega wanted the heroes. It was basically because Sega wanted the ones that saved Sally to be Sega game characters. Now, I, now, I'm not saying that Sega really said that or even acknowledged that, but, I, but just the fact that you chose Tails, Amy, and Sonic as team fighters, you know, it's like, seriously? You could have chose anyone else to join Sonic and Tails, maybe, or maybe Sonic and Amy, but yet you put the three together. Now, again, I can understand that the original plan for the story arc was for it to climax somewhat in 250, thus the reason for the game characters. I'm not denying that that's not a good reason, because when you go back to 175, you go back to 200, most of the time that the characters in those recent issues, and even in a sense, even with the, two tw even with, uh, the story arc that led in from 225 that led into uh, the Sonic Sonic Genesis when when you look at some of those most of those other recent um, anniversary issues most of the time it's been centric or it's been centered on the gaming characters coming to the re coming to the rescue so I can understand from that perspective why team fighters were Sonic Sally I mean Sonic Amy and Tails I can understand that, but still, it's like, really? Can't just, you know, stop for a second and say, no, we're not going to pander to Sega for a moment, and, you know, maybe we'll add somebody else and have one of the other characters stay behind instead of just Cream and Big? I mean, it would have made more sense. But, anyway, getting back on topic here, uh, you know, getting back on topic here, getting back on topic here, uh, the Mecha Sally arc, like I said, when it started, I will admit, had some good moments. It looked like it could go in a positive direction until they did the team split. And then I think that's when things started to fall flat because it's like you were developing one side of the team, one half of the team being Team Freedom, and even the team that kind of secretly formed from that, as you know, secretly formed under them as well, being the Secret Freedom Fighters. Like you were giving more time and you were putting more time and effort into those groups than you were team fighters, and I, th and, I and I think the reason that is, just like I mentioned, is team fighters was mostly Sonic, Amy, and Tails, and I think 
by not giving much uh, devotion, if you will, and character development to the team fighters aspect, I believe maybe it's just my maybe it's just me. You know, maybe it's just me, but I believe in a sense Ian was kind of protesting at the fact that he had to once again fo focus the heroics of saving the day and saving a friend on these Sega character on the Sega cast instead of just going and saying, "Hey, let's add some diversity." You know, you know, here's the thing. You know why people liked the Secret Freedom Fighters subplot? Because yes, you did have Silver involved. He's a Sega character. But most of the time, it didn't just focus around Silver. You had moments with Lita, 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 and Lyco, Lita and Lyco from the Wolfpack. You had moments with Eliza, Sally's brother. You had moments with non-Sega game characters. And that's what fans liked about them. The same with Team Freedom. Yeah, you had Cream, you had Big, but you focused on mainly on characters like My Mina, Amina. Ni you focused on Nicole, you focused on Rotor. That's why people were more favorable of those teams and why I feel Ian Flynn and others put dedication into those teams than they did with Team Fighters. Because I think even Ian Flynn realized that everybody's going to know what the end result's going to be because Sega's not going to allow it to be anything else. So, again, you know, the potential was there, you know, at the start. But as soon as they did the split, I think that's when it went downhill. Now, I'm not saying that there wasn't some interesting moments that could have been built upon and developed on more. You could have done, you know, Amy Rose, when she's confronted by Sally as Mecha Sally. And as Mecha Sally, she informs Sally that, hey, with my deletion, my destruction, you're free to go and be with Sonic or something like that. And, you know, Amy has to tell him, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to do that. I'm not here to destroy you. I'm here to save you, not destroy you, not put you out of commission. And they could have really built upon that. They could have really grew Amy in character with that moment. But they didn't. Thankfully, you have the online comic adaptation called Mobius Legends, which kind of focuses on these moments that were missed and in the more recent Mobius Legends issue it focuses on Amy having a confrontation in her mind of whether or not what Sally as Mecha Sally said is true would she have a better chance of being with Sonic if she's not if Sally's not around it works out it, it works out very very well and again that's an interesting moment there's other missed opportunities as well in this arc. There are, there are missed opportunities in this arc as well that could have been capitalized on or hinted at. You know, you take a look at how Sally, you know, basically as Mecha Sally, Mecha Sally, when she's fighting Tails, when she tells Tails, hey, you have a choice. You can either defeat me and capture me or you could save that village. Now, if Sally was totally gone on... Yeah, she would probably say that, but if she was totally gone, she would attack Tails from behind as soon as he turned his back. But he, but she didn't. She didn't. And she let him go. Same, and this can be woven in to, I think it's in the same issue as well, but woven in with a moment where she goes to Eliza's hut, because this is the village Eliza's lived in before he went back to New Mobotropolis. Um... Well, not New Mobile Metropolis, but back to the Kingdom, back to Not Whole Village, Kingdom of Acorn. Uh, when Mecha Sally goes to Elias's hut in his old village, he escapes, and instead of going after him, she just looks out that window, and it's almost like maybe it's just me, but it's almost like you could see a, a look of regret on her face, like she doesn't want to do this, but she has no choice, she has no control. So, those interesting moments, in my opinion could have been capitalized on you could have had Eggman real look back and say you know why didn't Mecha Sally go after Elizas why didn't she attack Tails from behind and by building upon that you could have made Eggman realize oh crap 
Maybe she's a lot more strong-willed than I thought. Maybe she's got a little bit of free will still left in her, and i got to find a way to snuff that out or put, nip that in the bud. And they never did capitalize on it. And, you know, it's like, you know, it's like such a missed opportunity that could have been capitalized and made into a great opportunity. I mean, these are opportun- I mean, opportunities like this could have helped save the story. It really could have. You know, and, and the fact that you have Sally be the one that unwillingly causes Silver's future to become desolate. It's like, that's how you're going to tie this in? That's how you're going to make this work? That's how you're going to finish off, you know, fixing Silver's, Silver's future? You're going to have Sally be the reason? Now, I'm not saying they didn't give silver a great w- and now, now i'm not saying they didn't give silver a decent explanation to give to sonic and amy and tails and the arctic freedom fighters and explain hey yes it did interpretate that she's the traitor but it didn't interpretate why she was the traitor i mean yeah they gave him i mean the fact that they let him explain that hey within 200 years a lot of information can get lost and you know, in history, you know, a lot of historic information sometimes can get lost. And, you know, maybe there was confusion. And I'm not going to say it wasn't a decent explanation, but still, that's how you're going to wrap this up. You know, you're not, I mean, it would have made more logical sense if it would have been Sonic, honestly. Because here you have Sonic that's a free spirit, sometimes rebellious. It would have made it easier if he was the one that caused the desolation of the future. Not Sally. And I'm not saying that Sally doesn't have that much of an impact character-wise to make that happen. But it's like, still, really? She's the reason? She's the reason his future went up in flames? It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. But anyway, but anyway, you know, could have done a lot more with the revelation. You could have had after... Silver finds out from Harvey who exactly who the traitor is. Could have had some kind of a side story. And as much as I, much as people may not, as much as people may hate to hear this, you could have done a side story in the main book or even universe, a one-shot story, where Silver has to deal with the fact that wait a minute, girl that got roboticized, that sacrificed herself to roboticization to save her world, is the traitor. But she doesn't control her she's not in control of her actions you know how you know how could history mess this up how can they not realize that how i mean and, and the biggest question you could have him wonder is how is her sacrifice into robotization the reason we fell couldn't just be her so to me that was another missed opportunity and probably one of the biggest missed opportunities is you could have done a lot more with mecha sally if you wanted to as much as I didn't like the arc, as much as I didn't like reading, reading the arc, and I did read the arc because I made a promise and I did it, and I fulfilled it, I should say. But as much as I didn't like the arc being centered on Sally being Mecha Sally and you know saying things that she wouldn't normal, normally say, and you know maybe it's just me being a longtime Sonic fan, a longtime fan of Sad AM and the comics, it's, and the characters. But to me, it's just like this was not Sally. And yeah, they kind of acknowledge that in 256 after her and Amy get the memories back. You have Bunny comfort her and say, hey, it's over. It was, it says, don't worry about it. That wasn't you. So, you know, it, you know, so yeah, they did that. But still, you know, like a lot of fans, we did, uh, we did sympathize with what Bunny was telling her in that one panel in 256. But still, it's like, that's one of the reasons. But like I said, I did keep my promise. I did read and review the, the entire arc. And one thing a lot of people have agreed is you could have done a lot more with Mecha Sally if you wanted to. Ace of Speed 94 actually drew a picture of Mecha Sally in an evolved form. I've mentioned this before. Um, Ace of Speed 94 and Devonart took inspiration from the final boss battle in Sonic Heroes. When uh, Metal Sonic becomes this ultimate Metal Sonic dragon-like creature, here 
you could have done a lot more. Here, you could have done that. Sally. And I think that's when Ace of Speed drew that picture, that's what he was acknowledging. Like, hey, they could do a lot more. They could go this direction with her. Because then you could add a lot more conflict. You're going to add a lot more drama. Because it's like, yeah, they want to save her, restore, save and restore her to normal. But now she's in a form, she's evolved into this form that, yeah, you could deactivate and try to restore her back from this form to her Mechasally form and thus be able to de-roboticize her out of that. But also the other most logical thing is you would have to destroy her because she's in a form that could be unreversible. So... You could, they could have done something like that. They could have shown that, you know, if they wanted to really get into this Mecha Sally deal, that because she's been influenced by Eggman so much as Mecha Sally, even though she might have a tiny bit of free will, going back to what I said about Eggman figuring out, hey, you know, maybe I need to find a way to snuff out that remaining free will, that by doing so, he corrupts her even more to the point that now she wants to usurp him in power, just like Metal Sonic want to use up Eggman and Sonic Heroes. So it would have made it would have made more like I said for more dramatic conflict and character development. They really wanted to capitalize on it. They really wanted to capitalize on the Mecha Sally arc and the momentum they felt that they were getting. They could have done that. And in a sense it could have helped save the team fighters portion of the story arc. But they never did. So you know so it's like it, it, it's just, it, just, it just goes back to the fact that they had so many missed opportunities they never capitalized on. I mean, like I said, Sally letting Eliza's go instead of going after him. You know, letting Tails go back and save the village instead of attacking him as he's leaving. Like, you had so many opportunities, and yet you don't capitalize on them. Why? I mean, I admit the whole Pender's lawsuit didn't help. And I can't really say, I can't really say, you know, what else could have been done. And, you know, and speaking of Pinda's lawsuit, you know, yeah, I understand, you know, him getting the rights to characters like Julie Sue and most of the, and Linda and most of the Echidnas and Charmy's wife, Safan and, and uh, you know, Jeffrey St. John and Hershey St. John. I get that. I get the fact that he... His lawsuit allowed him to claim reclaim his characters. But even with that, when it came to the endangered species portion of this arc, you could have kept a lot more still in there. You could have kept a lot that was edited out still in there, in some shape or form. And by doing so, maybe that could have helped as well. But again, these are situations behind the scenes, and or not, that were missed opportunities that they could have capitalized on. I mean, heck, you have Bunny, you have Antron get blown, you get Bunny, I mean, here's another thing. Bunny gets restored to flesh and blood by, accidentally, by Nogus after she's crystallized. You have Antron put in a coma after he gets blown up in the, after a Metal Sonic self-destructs in his, in his face. And yet you don't capitalize on some of these situations. You don't do side stories with Bunny and it going back to the Badlands to where her uncle Beauregard is, you know, kind of, you know, confronting herself mentally with decisions she's about to make. People would have loved to see what, you know, the, any character development out of that. Heck, you could have even gone into Antoine's coma, into Antoine's mind when he's in a coma, and make him walking around in space wondering, you know, where he's at. And saying that the last thing he remembers is getting blown up in the face. It's having this Metal Sonic self-destruct in his face. And like, again, there was just so much more. I mean, these were the, the again, these were missed opportunities. You could have had, going back to Bunny, you could have had Bunny, when she meets up, goes back to her uncle Beauregard. You could have Beauregard's, you know, you know, uh, sit down with her sort of like father daughter but uncle niece and say hey you really and kind of ask her hey do you really want to go through with this really want to you know sacrifice the flesh and blood that you got back that you've been wanting back to be half cyborg again i mean heck one person even drew a picture on divinart of her on the operating table 
at our Uncle Beauregard's camp, getting ready to be getting ready to have her legs and arm uh, cut off to, and replaced by cybernetics. So, again, just so many missed opportunities. And like you know, if you were going to do this arc, fine, no problem. But it's like if you were going to do it, you should go. You should have gone full throttle with it. No hesitation. You know, true, you may have to take out some characters, but don't take out elements as well. Don't take other elements or scenes out. It's like, if you're going to go full throttle with this, go full throttle. And don't miss out on opportunities you could have capitalized on. Because I think the opportunities that I mentioned, could have that you they missed out on, could have really helped this story. You know, the whole Jeffrey St. John, Hersey St. John situation where Hershey just seemingly dies, but apparently went undercover. Could have done a lot with that, but you didn't. I mean, it's freaking hinted at when they meet up with Loop in the wolf pack, or with Lita and Lyco to go rescue Loop, that Hershey was going to meet up with them and help them. But, like, you know, I can understand the lawsuit, but still... This took place before Endangered Species, I believe, so you could have done something with her. You could have done a side story, maybe the issue before, to finding out that Sonic and Sonic and company are probably coming into the, the Eggman. You, you could have done some kind of side story acknowledging that she's there. Again, a missed opportunity. You know, looking back in it five years later, again, there were some positives, but most... But there were most negatives. And when I look at the Mecha Sally arc that I did finally read after 247, like I said, it, start, it looked like it started out promising, but as soon as the split happened between the teams, it went downhill. I know some people like Mixed Fan 8643 will disagree, and others may disagree, but still, I just felt like it started out good and promising, and then it just went downhill. And there's a lot of, and there's a, and that there were just a lot of missed opportunities, so many. I mean, you know, with the whole secret freedom fighter still, you had an opportunity right there for Tails to confront Silver in private and say, "Hey, I know what's going on. Why aren't you got? Why can't you let us know about it? Why didn't you let us know about it?" Or he could have confronted Shard about it. Same thing. At least let those two guys know that he knows what's going on has an idea of what's going on they should let them in on it so missed opportunity but yeah that's basically what it is looking five years back five years later looking back on it started out promising as soon as the team did the split went downhill and so many missed opportunities thrown out the window so i mean opportunities that were there but were missed he just really didn't help the arc so but yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that it's been five years this month since the Mecha Sally arc officially began. Let me know what you guys have thought.